Hello, testing, 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 mic, testing. Oops. Testing mic, one, two, three, testing mic. This is my first time in life. I hope I'm live. I think I'm live. This is live at the corner. I'll just wait for a couple of minutes to see anything else I need to do here. So what's the first time for everything? I think I'm live or else I'm speaking to myself. Hey, I can see somebody responding. Can somebody tell me if you can hear me clearly? Because I'm using this mic that I've not used for quite some time. <laughs> Hello, Nature Boy. Hello, Timia. Jonathan, Eternal Wedding. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I thought I'd give everybody a couple of minutes to for everybody to join. Yes, we can. Thank you, Nature Boy. No black cap. Uh, I thought that would go with the color of my my gray top. <laughs> wow. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. I'll give another couple, two minutes, and um, and start my session. I've got my script here. You know, you know, not everything is in the head. Actually, there's always a script in the background that I read through if I make mistake. But the fly session, I don't think I've got any choice. I cannot make mistake. If I do, forgive me. <laughs> so. Yes, this is quite different. So it's my first time doing live. I've seen, you know, uh, like Joe Wick, uh, the, the fitness trainer going live. Everybody's so natural. And I've seen guys with uh, social, uh, I think um, a couple of financial folks that do it live as well on YouTube. They look really natural, really slick. And sometimes I don't believe it's live, but it's not easy. I'm on a spotlight now. Um, hopefully, I think the thing that I, I'm nervous about is time. I just want to make sure that, you know, everybody's by, uh putting time to come and watch this risk transfer video. I want to make sure I, I finish in a good time to make sure I get a message out and not be too long. I've seen uh, some live stream that goes on for for like um, an hour, an hour, 15 minutes, you know, for a, a single person session, not even a, an interview. So I thought I need to keep to my time scale. And I'm also reading at the same time uh, on what you guys are reading. And uh, yeah, so Jonathan Ingram, portfolio grew so much since I stumbled across YouTube. Channel back and goes, thank you very much, Jonathan. Well done. You know, you need to give yourself, you, you guys need to give yourself credit. Pat on the back that you, you're taking your heart and cash to go and invest, you know. Uh, people like us on social media, the analysts can only help you so much, but it's yourself that actually carries the money and put it in investment pot and well done to you, you know. And um, good to see you live. Thank you. Thank you, Ryder. And Jatin, I see you again. Yeah. And Adrian, hello to yourself as well. I hope your mom is well as well. Yeah, Adrian is one of our, uh, uh, follow that I've, I've been with me months and I, he's told me that his mom is also following me so it's a uh, it's, it's an honor you know it's an honor so I think uh, let me check the time I've got a clock here I need to make sure that I keep to my schedule as well to make sure that I make you guys time worthwhile I've seen the clock on my on the face that it's three minutes so as you can see I'm in a layout where it's slightly different in my room I've just turned the camera around show the back wall if I need to use the screen but I don't think I'll be using the screen today uh, to present so uh, give about 10 seconds and I think I should be ready to start, ready to start. Hi, Tajid. Hi, how are you? Thank you for coming. <laughs> so, so what I'll do, let, let me uh, do a quick one minute to summarize what I want to do because, you know, there's no presentation slide here that I can uh, present. I'll try to come close to the mic. But where I'm trying to come from is it's going to be three parts here. And the three parts to this... Um, Video. So I'll try to use five minutes, five minutes, and five minutes, and plenty of question between. So the first part that I want to speak about is risk transfer. I really want to share what is risk transfer. It's not. I've read lots of books, but they don't really tell you what's risk transfer, how to to remedy your 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 your, your sick investment. So that's what I want to go to a bit of the history and everything down in five minutes. Okay, all compressed down and show you a couple of uh, a good facts and history how I came about this risk transfer. And then I'll do a bit QA. I'll look through the screen here and see any question that I can catch. Or if you guys miss anything that I need to be explaining, I'll do it for like a minute or two. And then on the part two, I want to give a couple examples, really. It's no point in telling something where I don't give examples. I'm going to give you like three life lessons that I've done, two good ones and one bad one. Okay, you know, not everything's perfect, but you have to know bad one and what are the lessons learned. And then end of part two, another 
question session, and eventually we'll go into like the full question, and and you guys can ask me what six stock you have. I'll try to pick up what you guys uh, issues are, see what the consensus is, and see whether I can I can can steer you guys out of somewhere or give a suggestion just to to plant that seed in your head. I think that's that's the the, the big big thing out of it. So so let's let's start with part one. Let me turn off my phone first to avoid any distraction or or any WhatsApp or Telegram. Telegram is huge now. Telegram is huge. Everybody's on Telegram. So, okay, today it's not about Telegram. It's about risk transfer, okay? So, I think I suppose we all need to ask, what is this risk transfer? So, I came about this risk transfer where I remember about three years ago when I invest in a stock. You know, I, I literally invest on a Tuesday. I put in like 5,000 pounds. And a Thursday, I was so believing, I believe the stock so much, I put in the 5,000 pounds and then the 2,000 pounds and like 12, 15 grand I put in. Then the following Monday, the stock fell. The stock like dropped, literally, it dropped about 65%. It just went boom. I saw my money just literally more than half. It's gone. And at that point, I go, what do I do? Uh, how do I remedy this? So I was stuck in a situation where I could hold and buy more. I could take money from someone and buy more, try to average down, which is wrong. Don't, don't ever do that. Or I move my money elsewhere. That's where I'm coming from. It's the word risk transfer. It's not rocket science. So I felt that this is the right time to, to share this. I didn't want to share it last year because we were on the bull market. I think we we're supposed to be focusing on buying. So what, why am I going to the risk transfer now? Why am I explaining it? You know, I, I've seen... Some people ask me, why, Alex, everybody's in profit. It's true. You all must be in profit by now, regardless if you're an American investor, Australian, or you're from Hong Kong, Singapore, or UK, even though we're going through Brexit, your portfolio should be in a good negative, uh, positive, sorry, positive territory now. You should have recovered. Um, I got a text from my mate. He says, you know, finally he's gone positive. Everything looks good. Dividends are coming back. But if you still have something in your portfolio, a stock that's not doing well, even everything is, you know, rainbow in the sky i mean something is wrong you need to you need to observe how much more you're down is it 40 percent? is it 20 percent? so you need to start thinking maybe risk transfer that's where i'm coming to so any talk uh, anything that's still negative so i want you guys to look in your portfolio think about it think it carefully what else is sick that the cancerous stock that's not doing well it doesn't mean that it's mega big cap it could be shell it could be bp biggest company like uh, a year ago before COVID, but now they are, they are they're still down 25 percent. so you need to look, think about it okay so it could be any amount. It, 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 it doesn't mean it's 5%. It could be 5%, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 55. As long as it's not going to zero, as long as your investment is not going all the way to zero, you know, your 500 pounds or your 1,000 pounds or 10,000 pounds, all the way to zero, you still can save it. Trust me, you still can save it. I've done before. You still can save it. You can still save it. So you just make sure that I'm going to show you step by step, okay? As long as it's not going to zero. And, and the thing that you need is this... Risk transfer is not the, the, the perfect solution, you know. It's high risk because you're moving from one risk asset to another risk asset, but it's calculated uh, assessment that you can actually give a fighting chance for your money to, to come back. That's where I'm coming from. You calculated risk, this which I'm going to show. So the three things that you first that you need to know is you cannot be too stubborn or greedy. Number one, three points that I'm going to give you. You cannot be too stubborn or greedy. You cannot keep thinking that my, my stock has gone down so low, you know, my, my um, BA has gone down for so low. My, my EasyJet or Carnival has gone down for so low. I invested since before COVID. It's gone down so low. I'm hoping for a comeback. You know, don't be too greedy. You need to look elsewhere. You need to put your head up and look elsewhere, okay? And the second thing is you need to, you need to let go and move on. I have spoken to a lot of people, friends and families, buying stocks, and they don't want to let go. They say, no, you'll come back. I do not want to, to take that 50% loss. You know, that's the, the wrong way. I'll show you later. And you have to be realistic about it, you know. If the company cannot recover, don't be too stubborn. Don't tell yourself that they will come back, they will come back. If the company, the business doesn't come back, the business doesn't come back, okay? So what is risk transfer? So I'm just going to quickly summarize it here, really easy for you and explain to you. So risk transfer is a process of selling or cutting loose that stock that you hold that's losing for a similar risk, okay? But with a higher potential upside. Okay, let me give you an example. One example here that I'm going to give you, okay? I'm going to repeat again. Risk transfer is when you're selling a risk with, you're selling a sick stock with a similar risk, but a higher potential upside. What, does, what, what do I mean by that? Okay, one example, Intel, okay? If you know Intel, Intel used to be one of the biggest semiconductor company. They have got their chip in every computer, every laptop. 
Intel has dropped drastically, dropped dramatically. And you know, I know people are still holding Intel. But what I tell them, business is not going well, despite they're going up to, uh, this week, but you know, they're not compared to the rivals. So what, I told, what I've been telling people at that time, Intel, cut it off, move somewhere else. Move to the likes of Micron, move to the likes of Nvidia, move to the likes of Skyworks. You can see the trend. When I'm saying this is money that's coming within one area, semiconductor Intel is leaving Intel, it must be going somewhere. This is zero sum error somewhere. This is zero sum. So money goes somewhere. So that's why I said leave Intel, go to Micron, Skyworks, NVIDIA, or AMD. You could make your money back potentially because that's where the money is flowing. So you have to follow the flow of money. Okay. So and the other example is the other example I can give is like Shell or BP. Like back in uh, back in November, October, folks were telling me. They've been making losses, about 40% shell, 40% loss at BP. They've got a pension funds. Only what do I do? So think about it. So what I would advise on that situation is cut your losses on BP and shell because will oil come back? Is oil dead? Do you believe oil is dead? Do you, is it going to come in the next six months? But then look elsewhere. I would say go to hydrogen stocks. How about hydrogen? Green energy. That's what's happened between November till now. Green energy has gone up. It's gone up two times, three times, four times because of Biden coming so if someone would take the risk of your BP's losses and move it across to a different, a different stock of the same class, but higher risk upside, it makes it so much easier. Okay, so how do I do it? Let me let me let me just explain that that simple three steps. Okay, that I use myself to to make a decision on this. That that works. I would say it's worked about seven out of ten of my seven out of ten times. Okay, so I would say. Find something that the losses that you make, it could be 30%, 40%, or even 5% or 10%. Find something that's on the upside on a similar scale. Don't be too greedy. Okay, don't jump to a SPAC stock. Jump, don't jump from like the likes of Facebook to a SPAC stock. Don't be too greedy. If, if you're losing on Facebook, maybe perhaps find Google or maybe perhaps find Apple. Something similar in a similar risk level, okay? And the second part is um, find somewhere most probably, preferably in the same category. If it's a mega cap stock, find another mega cap stock. If it's a car stock that you have that you're losing on BMW, go to Tesla. You know, if it's Toyota that you're losing, you know, go to Neo Tesla from a car industry to another car industry. Okay. And the third one is the third one, which I find it the most critical. Yeah. When you sell it, don't keep as cash. You have to buy it straight away. You have to risk transfer straight away. Why? It's just human, yeah. Human. If you keep the money for so long, if you let's say you you bought a stock for ten thousand pounds, you lost half of it, five thousand pounds back in your pocket. You get greedy. The longer you hold that money, you get greedy. You find something that's high risk that you shouldn't be going into. So it's best before you sell the stock, look elsewhere where you can find a stock of similar ground, similar industry similar risk potential upside and then boom sell same day and buy same day or within plus or minus two days i think the last part is the most important okay the last part is the most important it's more calculated and you you wouldn't you won't get into the FOMO effect or you won't get into this demoralization so that's where i'm coming from so hopefully that three key point uh, it gets you uh, going gets you thinking so just let me repeat is the losses percentage and find a potential upside that's the first one and the second one is if you move from one industry, make sure you go to the similar industry. And the third one, it would be uh, if you transfer, do it straight away. Don't wait for more than three days. Sell it off and buy on the same day or the second day or third day so you don't get into formal effect or get demoralized. So this is this is really the quick principle recap of the risk transfer where you have a cancerous stock that you can't hold no more, that you don't believe the business has changed. You don't want to, to, to stave the losses for so long Okay, you don't want to save the losses for the next two years, three years, four years, five years. You get demoralized and you stop investing. Just straight away transfer it out to somewhere else and let you buy back the time that you buy back the gains. That's that's where I'm coming from. So I hope I hope that, that gets it through. So that's the end of part one. I want to get through a couple of questions, see if anybody's got a question. And then let me get to the three examples on, on what I, I've experienced in, in my lifetime. You know, two good ones and, and one not so good one. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm just going to go through the list. I can see um, uh, I've been there before. I've lost 20% and then sold panic. In the, um, I'm reading Simon J. Simon J, I've, I've been there before, lost 20%. I thought you'd give me 50%, but didn't lose again. My beginning mistake. Uh, yes, sometimes it's not too perfect. Sometimes 
you know, we, we do fall into like a stomach rabbit hole. So sometimes we have to, to look and also time it right, I think. Uh, what else? I'm trying to see. Uh, where would you move uh, Moderna to? That's a good question. That mess to sell in December. That's a good one. So Moderna for me is, I, I, did, I was in the same situation with Moderna as well. So I cut my, I, I jumped to Moderna, not knowing uh, BioStock well enough. So I cut, I, what, what I've done is I cut Moderna and instead of moving to another biotech company, I went into, into Upwork. I remember I cut off Moderna and I dropped the money that I've lost back into Upwork and then it went up really quick. I lost about 20% and I jumped. So sometimes maybe not the same industry, sometimes some, I jumped into something that I knew that was a potential upside and I did it straight away on the same day after the losses. And the next one is... Uh... Le lemonade throw under 63 good price to buy in yeah i'm reading arman sydney's uh text he says lemonade dropped 164 today bought at 163 is a good price to get in uh for the value of the stock i think lemonade i think it slowly is going to come down i think i did a chart before for lemonade showing that it might come down up to i can't remember the point i think they need to come down to about 155 i think so I think they dropped today and they might drop even more. So they'll be hovering around this range before they start hitting 200. But if if you like lemonade long term, just, just hold it. I'm holding lemonade long term. I'm buying for every dip. Yeah. And I see uh, someone's asking about Facebook because I know someone's asking about Facebook recently. Where do you see Facebook going? Should I move? So Facebook is something that you have to decide. Okay. If For me, business-wise, Facebook will still be great. They'll be making money, high profit margin. And uh, they'll be making money out of nowhere, really, you know, selling ads and everything else. But if you if, if you get bothered by the news, if you get bothered that Mark Zuckerberg gets attacked by the Congress, if Mark Zuckerberg speaks up, everything falls out. If you, if, if you don't like the political side of things that it affects you, it, it makes you demoralized, it, it really affects you in your own mood, then you should move away from Facebook to somewhere else. You know, you've got the likes of Pinterest, Twitter, um, other social media platform, you've got Microsoft that you can move into, which is mega cap stock. So... If you get bored at my Facebook, you can't buy whenever it dips, then move elsewhere. But some folks I know believe in Facebook so much that they, they take this as an opportunity and they keep buying Facebook in every dip. And when Facebook keep quiet, it goes up. So that's that's my point of Facebook. You just need to see which side of the fence are you on Facebook. Um, it, Alistair West, Italian banks held them for too long, improving at the moment, but probably, probably won't last. See, you're already telling yourself, Alistair, that you know, maybe you shouldn't be holding. You're already telling yourself. For me personally, I, I don't invest in banks no more. If I want to invest in the financial sector, it would either be fintech or investment firm like uh, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, or an upcoming Robinhood. That's where my money will go for the for the financial sector. For for bank wise, Italian banks, you know, it's it's going to be really difficult with low interest rates. Okay. So let me go back. I'm watching the clock. It's 18 minutes already. I'm watching the clock. I really want to give three good examples and then I'll come back to the question session again. I'm going to leave at the end. So anybody who, who wants to go can go, you know. I don't hold you guys for too long. So I want to give three good life examples that I have experienced on this risk transfer, why I want to share this uh, quite importantly. So the first one, the first one, if you've all followed me since the beginning of last year, you, I'm sure at least 20% of you that joined me found me from this stock that I speak about, NAT. I did see someone mention it, but I couldn't catch the name. NAT, so Nordic American Tankers, you know. As a man that works in the oil industry, when the oil crashed back in April, May, I foremost, I jumped into NAT stocks. I dropped as much as about 25 to 30,000 pounds on NAT stocks. Yes, that's right. It's not just my money. It was my kids' money, my wife's money, or collectively 30,000 pounds into NAT. Think about it. If you went back in time, I could have dropped 30,000 pounds in Tesla and I could be relaxing just now, you know. It could be, it, it's an easy like 3x just now if I drop in. But no, I went into NAT and NAT instantly, this, then the week after, I formed, so I bought it at 7 bucks, average at 6. It dropped up to at 350, okay. three. I held it for two quarters for about six months before I decided to let it go. And where did I go to? I left NAT. I couldn't get into oil. I couldn't go into Fiverr because it was up. Pinterest, it was up already. I went to Tesla. Yes, I went to Tesla just before Tesla stock split. I sold NAT, 50% loss. 
I risk transfer all the way to Tesla. I told that to a lot of viewers as well on my last video about NAT, and I, I think a few people have done it. I went to Tesla and thank goodness Tesla has just rocketed since their, their, their days and I made my money back. I even made profit just now in a short span of, let's say, that was around about October until now, about three to four months. So that worked. That was a good story. I made so much loss NAT. I put my hand up that I FOMO'd despite of all my theories of how great NAT was, but I risk transfer. I moved away and recovered. So that was a good story that I would be always telling myself, my kids and you know everyone on my, on, on my channel. So that is one successful one. And the second one that I did wrong and luckily recovered is Under Armour, okay? Back about four years ago, Under Armour was the best, okay? They had Stephen Curry, The Rock, they had uh, Michael Phelps, every big superstar from the Olympics, uh, you know, with Under Armour. Under Armour was around about $100 a share, okay? And Under Armour, instead of stock split, the stock combined, so for every two stock became one stock. So the 100, they dropped from 100 to 60, and 60, they half their shares to 30. And then I held it still. And from 30, they dropped to 20. It's ridiculous. I lost about 65%. It's really, really bad. Yeah, I put so much money in, in, in Under Armour. I lost about 65%. And then what I've done is I look everywhere. And the only place that I could find that's still great value, there's still upside, was Nike. It was Nike. So I put my money, I, I risk transfer, took the loss, covered my head, went to Nike straight away. Within the same week, I bought Nike. And Nike was going through the same troubles as well because the whole industry. And then things started recovering. Then the Chinese started buying lots of Nikes. You know, Nike was booming in China in 2017, 2018. And then it stock split into two. So eventually, I made, you know, my 60% losses came up to as high as 50%. I got 50% of my money back. And eventually, I sold Nike and went somewhere else. So I recovered within the span of about three years. It took three years before that recovered. But if I never risk transfer from Under Armour, yeah, look at where Under Armour is. There's still 20 bucks. I will still be holding my money three and a half years later with 65% loss. So you need to think about it. You know, it doesn't happen in six months, eight months, but it's better than you holding that, that six stock for three years and it's still where it is. The likes of GoPro, Fitbit, a couple of examples, GE. So these are the examples I can think of. Don't, don't hold on to these stocks if you can't hold them to. So something to, to, to think about, you know. And, um, and this other one, this one that went really, really wrong. It is not my story. It's a, fr a story that I, uh, of a friend I used to work with, you know. I used to work on the oil platform, okay. And guys in the oil, they love to invest their money in uh, drilling companies. They just love it. They hear somebody on the phone saying, you know, that, that vessel across the, the ocean there, or across, sorry, across the sea there that you can see, they're going to hit oil. They're going to hit oil. Look at the stock price. It's like five, five pounds. They're going to hit. They're going to double. They're going to triple. The people actually on the platform, they bet. Yeah? They think it's William Hill. They put tens and thousands of pounds. So somebody I knew, he bought this oil operator, this, this drilling company that the thing's going to hit. And guess what? On the Sunday, there was no oil. It was dry well. They drilled through, poop, no oil came out. Vessel packed up, left. The share price of that company dropped 70%, 80%. Man, they dropped like, like carrots. So what this guy did was he says, okay, he's going to take his money out, but he risk transfer somewhere else worse. He went to a service company like Slumberger, okay? And then the 2015 oil crisis hit, 2016 oil crisis hit, and Slumberger went from highs of like 50 bucks all the way to like $15 a share. It got even worse. He lost his money even worse, you know. So that's a, a bad place of risk. Was. He went from, from the oil drilling operator, which is a bigger cap, and he went to Slumber J and made it worse. So sometimes you shouldn't get too greedy in that scenario. Sometimes you just have to, to perhaps calculate your risk. Don't go, you lose 50% and I want to make 120% back. No, you need to go. If you want, if you lose 50%, make sure you find a potential that gives you another 50%. Don't be too greedy because you just want to make your money back. And once you make your money back, and then you want to look elsewhere. So that, that's where I'm going. So that, those are the three examples. So I, I hope that example will, will cement what I say about risk transfer, which I will repeat again. So the risk transfer is the process of you transferring, selling and cutting all your losses or you're losing trade to something of a similar risk, okay? And also with the similar or higher, slightly higher potential upside. And don't hold it for too long. Don't hold that cancer for too long and move on somewhere else. 
And then just for me to reiterate again, I know I repeat this, but I just want to make sure that people understand is once, you know, the three rules for, for risk transfer is make sure that, you know, your downside and upside percentage is equal. Don't go too greedy. Don't go for like 200% potential upside because it could go down 200%. And second one, preferably in the same industry or something that you know, okay? And the third one, most important, if you lose risk transfer, if you dump that stock, make sure you, you sell that stock and pick up and the next stock quickly. If you can't find the next stock to pick up, just hang on until you find the right opportunity. Okay, wait until you find the right opportunity. And if you think that's the right 50-50 chance, jump on. That's that's my rule for risk transfer. It's worked for me seven or eight out of 10 times. And it helps to keep emotions at bay. You just don't feel, you know, I want to jump off a cliff before I've lost so much money. But, you know, there are like thousands and thousands of stocks. There are Hong Kong Stock Exchange, New York Stock Exchange. There's the FTSE, there's the Germany. There's so many stocks out there in the world. There's bound to be somewhere that could match your losses on the upside. That's where I'm coming from. So don't don't lock yourself in, into one stock, one industry, or, or one area, or one country. Okay. So this this is really really my risk transfer. So I want to leave part three session for anybody else who has got a similar issue or somewhere that I can help. I'm try I'll try to go all the way scroll up to see if I can find any relevant question. But let me get a drink of water first while I search, and then maybe guide through, and then I'll follow my list down and see any other questions. You know. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll the question I'll try to keep the question of risk transfer first for the for the first five to seven minutes and then after that I'll speak about any stocks that you guys want to speak about I'll see what's the most popular one in there because I see a lot of lemonade uh, questions coming up so um, let me see if anybody's got a scenario that you 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 want me to guide you through. Uh, I see now, Doctor Doctor Nav Atwal. I know I, I've spoken to you before. How are you doing? I'm reading your your text here. It says, "What are your thoughts on Shift Technologies?" I'm down seven percent, minor really, but worried about the rises in COVID cases. Okay, so I put my hand up. I'm not sh I'm not very clued up about Shift Technologies without looking at Yahoo Finance and and StockCut.io. So if you're down seven percent on Shift Technologies, I believe it's a tech stock. You know, reading from the name. So try to think of anything that's on the upside within on a similar scale today that you can see is down by seven percent. So in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, tech stock, high growth tech stock, you know, you're going to like so crowd strike. I think they're down or, you know, CRM, Salesforce, they're down just now. They're down even more. Facebook are down as well. You see, if you think Facebook might be good upside, that you could jump on for the quick, quick 7% rise. Uh, you know, I'm thinking Tesla is down by like 2 3% just now. And you've got fuel cell that's down as well by, I think, 10%. Snow is down as well from its all-time high of 40%. So there are lots of stock that you could find that if you want that 7%, find that 7% gain, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Adwal, they can help you, you know. If you don't feel confident, shift, jump, you know. If your heart is telling you no, jump, okay. And I'm going, I see lots of Virgin Galactic uh, discussion as well. I'll come back more on that. Um, uh, uh, I want to see any similar case on uh, risk transfer potential ones. Uh... Yes, BTWN. Okay, let me speak of BTWN because I'm down on BTWN, yeah, just now. Okay, BTWN, I don't know if you guys know, it's basically a spec stock by, by Palantel's um, owner and also the richest man in Hong Kong. Together, they form a spec stock. And they were rumored to buy an Indonesian e-commerce company called Tokopedia. The rumors is huge and the, the stock jumped up. But then I think the worry now is whether the stock is declining that uh, this, this deal might go not go through. If this deal doesn't go through, that stock will drop from 15 potentially to all the way nine bucks. So there's a potential 50% loss. And you know, even myself, I'm sitting here thinking if this doesn't happen, I'm already down about 10, 15% should I make that risk transfer. I'm also thinking. So SPAC stock, to potentially another spec stock or to a hydrogen stock. So for me, my BTW and my, my own personal preference, I'm thinking of going to either GHIV, which I think it's going through. It's most likely going through. BFT is picking momentum. Okay, if I want to go to spec stock. If not, I can go into hydrogen cell, fuel cell. That's what I really like. And um, Palantir is another one. Palantir, I think it's, you know, it's... It's dropping just now, but there's still a potential upside of 45, 50 in the next couple of years. So, you know, Palantir might be one that I would jump onto. Uh, so that's for BTWN. 
I'm actually worried about BTWN as well. If the spec doesn't go to, it could fall to nine. That's that's where I'm coming from. At the moment, I think I'm about 15% lost just now. I'm not checked today. So that's me, BTWN, yeah? Okay. Uh, GS Smith, Sun, Susan, I think GSK and Shell killed me. The same question my best friend asked me today. So let's pick Shell, yeah? I sold all my Shell, okay? Uh, my son had Shell, and guess what? I moved to Tesla about two months ago. And three months ago before the, the S&P induction, and guess what? It's gone up 87%. That 30%, that 50 loss from my son's uh, investment has gone up 80% because I risk transfer to Tesla. So it's, you know, if you are 40%, don't think that it's dead, yeah? If you want to leave Shell, leave and go find somewhere that's got potential upside. So as it stands today, look at all the hydrogen stock, all the green energy, because that's where the money is coming, going from oil company, all the way, all those green stocks. With Biden coming in, solar stocks and all go. So something to think about. And for GSK, for GlaxoSmithKline, another question a friend asked me as well. I look at his portfolio today. He's down about 10%. And uh, where, where could you go for GSK? You know, it's a dividend stock. It's, it's stabilized. You could go, um, you could go to, uh, I think people are looking at beverage stock. People are looking to, oh wait, sorry. Another better one. GSK is down. You could potentially look for another dividend stocks like, you know, uh, <laughs> this is bad, but gambling, you know, casinos, Willem Hill, all these things. When things, countries open up, they would go up. Or if you think GSK's vaccine play might not play out well, or you could, uh, if you could take a higher risk that you want to go to like some Moderna, it might potentially go up. I'm not too sure. I'm not going to play Moderna no more. So you need to think of where you can move with GSK. So if, if it was me today, if I would sell today GSK, I would potentially go into the likes of uh, the, the banks are going up. I know it's a different completely company, but it's a dividend paying to another dividend paying company. Uh, GSK, uh, high dividend, or you can go to beverages company. Like Monster Beverage is on the rise. People are drinking again. Or delivery company that pays dividend as well. So somewhere that you can think, if you don't believe GSK will be a good play for recovery. But I think it's only down 10%. So you need to think, is it worth moving away for just 10%? Okay. Um, let me see who else. Let me catch a couple more questions on risk transfer. And then I can freely go into any other stocks that we'd like to speak about. Um, let me see. Nike long term from Jatin. Okay, currently down Unilever and Procter and Gamble risk transfer to Mark and Co. I'm not sure who Mark and Co. I thought it was Mark and Spencer. Sorry, uh, is is Procter and Gamble down? I'm not too sure, but if I thought Procter and Gamble was up. Okay, so Unilever and Procter and Gamble. Okay, where I'm not sure who Mark and Co. is, but let me see what I, I've already got a couple of companies in my head. So Unilever, dividend paying. Procter Gamble, dividend paying. It used to be dividend growing stocks, but obviously I'm not sure whether it's growing. But what if, if you don't want to go Unilever, Procter Gamble, I like the likes of Nike, McDonald's, Costco. You know, these guys have proven they are COVID proof. Even though Wave 2, Wave 3 comes in, they'll still stand the test of time. So if I were to move from a uh, 5 to 10% loss to Unilever, p and I'll go Costco, Nike, or... McDonald's because of growing dividends and potential uh, back to growth sales revenue. That's where I will go. Okay, that's where I'll go. So I hope that helps. Simon does. I think that's your question. Um, Merck and Merck and Co. I, I, don't, I need to check who Merck and Co. is. Um, yeah, I think I think is there anybody else got any question? I've I've already spoke about BTWN. Anything or risk transfer? CRM. I I think. Those, some people have made loss on CRM, yeah, but I think CRM is still a good cloud stock. It's a 20% growth. The risk where CRM is down at 215 just now is because uh, analysts fear that this 20% growth will decline to 15 and then that will drop their growth revenue. That's why they bought uh, Slack to grow. That's the fear. But wait till the earnings. I'm sure the earnings, if the earnings sustain more than 20, 21, 22%, then you're fine. They're still in the growth story. So CRM, I think it's still in a good growth uh, area. I see John Tickle asking when to buy airlines or recovery. Airlines or recovery or the beach stock. I call it the beach stock. Yeah, you got beverages, you got uh, the, the cinemas, the casino. Uh, 
Um, some, a lot of analysts call this the epic center stocks, like the oil included. So a lot of them are positioning themselves with cash and already positioned to buy their stocks when they come on the recovery. And when they come back to even further recovery, they're going to come in really quick. The reason that slow down is the obvious reason because uh, the second wave, the third wave that's come in, the lockdown, Germany lockdown now, and the numbers has gone up. The lockdown seems in Germany is longer than before. So everybody's worried about that. So I would, I would give a timeline up to March, up to after Easter or slightly before Easter on the news about the COVID-19, about the vaccine distribution. Once you hear a hint of recovery, once you see momentum, I think that's a good time to get into the airlines stock for me. But if you want to get into airlines early, even before going to airlines, you still got the likes of Lockheed Martin and BA, yeah? If you want to capitalize on them, Lockheed Martin and BA is already making very stable momentum. Okay, that's for the airlines for me. Okay, I'll just go all the way to the bottom. If nobody's got any more, uh, any more restaurants to stock, I'll just go to... Uh, I'll just go speak about all the, the popular ones. Any stock, you know, we don't have to speak about risk transfer. Any popular stock. So I'll go back up again, just make sure that I've, I've catch uh, lemonade. I've seen a lot of people talking about lemonade today. Lemonade drop because of lemonade dropping. Alibaba. Anybody wants to speak about Alibaba? I, I dropped Alibaba. I, I, I made... I dropped Alibaba. I bought it about 280, average to 260. And it dropped to, when it broke the floor down, I sold Alibaba. And when I sold my Alibaba, I went to Lemonade and I bought more Lemonade, more Fiverr, more Tesla. That's how. And then, you know, you know, sometimes it's all luck and they all have gone up and I've made my money back again. So I did not hold Alibaba for too long. If once they broke that 250 or 260 floor, I let it go. So, uh, if you want the risk transfer of Alibaba, it's coming back on up. It's up to you. It's really down to the politics. The business has not changed. Alibaba will still sell so many items out there. And, uh, you know, if you can still wait for another six to nine months before everything recovers because Chinese New Year is coming up and loads of sales, people are buying online because people still can't go out. And this will boost the sale as not as much as 11, 11, 11. But we still boost the sales like Christmas in, in the Western countries. That's that's my, my thoughts. And business-wise, I think Alibaba is still good. Okay. Um, I am just looking. Uh, I'm just reading digital device. It says, Intel is already dead. Are they years behind the competition? Yeah, I would agree. So I know Intel is on the backup with Taiwan Semiconductor. That's the thing, huh? I speak, I speak so much about NVIDIA and AMD. To be honest, the real winner for the semiconductor is Taiwan Semiconductor. That's, that's, they, they pay dividends. They're growing. And the, the country is pushing the economy up. It's not just Taiwan Semiconductor. It's the whole 36% of the Taiwanese index is Taiwan Semiconductor. I would, I would put all my money in there, but I cannot. I mean, we in the UK cannot buy on our ISA. So if you're in Australia, if you're in Germany, you can, you know, if you can buy any, any uh, semiconductor stock, buy NVIDIA. You know, it gives you a dividend. And Broadcom is another one as well. You know, I'm, I think it's really underrated, these two countries. And they still be going. They still be going. They've got Intel. And they are, they could, they'll be building the, the, the chips for the Tesla cars. They'll be building AMD chips. They'll be PlayStation chips. The Apple phone chips. It's time for semiconductor, man. This is position for success. Um, I'm just looking at... Um, uh, ETF. Why green? Okay, I'm looking at mess. Uh, oh, uh, race, race, so Taran, right? So, hi, Alex. What's your thought on shift technologies? I bought an Xmas Eve. Oh, I think a similar question to, to, to Nav as well. Bought Christmas Eve 9. I think I've spoken about the seven percent transfer that you could find hydrogen stocks or, or, or EV stocks. That you can can go into if you if you can't take the seven percent move elsewhere. Sorry, I think it's similar to to Nav's uh, question just now. Okay, I'm looking at Mr. Stifler seventy five. Why green energy dropped drastically like two thousand eighteen fuel cell? Why green energy? Um, I think green. I checked it this morning. Fuel cell dropped about uh, nine ten percent. Plug dropped to about nine percent and recovered really quickly. I actually bought it when it dropped up to the nine. It came back up. I think I'm on two percent profit just now. Uh, I think people are just taking profit. It's just really unusual for it to go up so high, so fast. And it was driven by plug power, yeah? 
It's driven by plot power having the JT with, with Renault. And everybody like Bloom, everybody like the Ballot Power, all gone up. Blink recharge gone up. They're all following plot power's momentum and also Biden coming in. So it's normal that people are taking profit just now. So don't feel too down that uh, it's a pump and dump. I don't think it's a pump and dump. I think it's for the long term. And the fact that one thing that I never explained in my video yesterday, Bloom Energy, Plot Power, Ballot Energy, Fuel Cell, they all have different businesses. They're not the same. They're not like BP Shell or Total. They're completely different businesses, completely different patents, completely different way of converting energy. But at the end of the day, the end client is the same. So this company, either one of them will do really well and one or two of them will fall. So I think Green Energy is still, there's still, still room for growth. Uh, I'm pretty confident uh, about that. Um, I think I speak about Alibaba, um, red wine time. <laughs> I ran a, a school night. I've got kid, uh, school, uh, kids are in school tomorrow. So it's my turn, my Friday off. It's my turn to take over my wife to be the teacher at home. So I need to be 100% alert. No, 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 no red wine today. Uh, is AMD still the top three growth stock? AMD, NVIDIA is my top two growth stock, but I do class AMD and NVIDIA the same. If I do sell, I'll sell the same thing. So yes, they're still my top three growth stock. In fact, if you combine my NVIDIA and AMD, they are way higher than my Tesla or, or Fiverr. Um, I'll put my hand up for that. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm reading Nagi's uh, Sagi Nid. Which three stocks do you think have the highest growth potential this year? Um, it's it's a very hard one, and I'm not keen to. I, I did I did release this growth stock story, and I, for my personal opinion, standing in uh, January just now, yeah, I think one of the key, one of the spec stock that everybody is crazy about, like the BFT, or BTWN, or GHIV, or, or one of this stock, one of the spec stock will be a growth story. I think that's one, and the second one is I think one of this EV companies. You know, we've seen Neo and Tesla grow, but I'm sure one of these Chinese like Li Peng or Li Auto or X Peng or, or one of these, I think there's a new one, uh, work, work, is it Workhorse, Old Town Motors, one of this EV spec new company, one of them will, will go because I think the EV sector, there's still not enough room. I think the likes of BMW, Mercedes, Toyota, they will, they will find to come to a point in May, June, July, they find that they're quite behind. And the only way to go is to buy one of this company. I'm going to see lots of merger. I'm, I'm sure the likes of Ford and Nissan will find that they're quite behind and they will start buying up this company. That's my speculation. Yeah, that's my speculation. I'm really watching out who's buying what. I think you're going to see GM starting making moves and then Ford will start coming in. So I think it's a spec stock. Uh, uh, EV will still have a, a big, big play uh, in it. And then what's the other highest potential growth? I think, I think cryptocurrency. I still think that Bitcoin might be uh, might be the story until the end of the year. I know they have that, but I think one of the cryptocurrencies will do well for in terms of the highest growth potential as we stand in January. So that's me. EV, a SPAC stock, and a cryptocurrency. So, uh, Kayla Mahoney, what's your thoughts on Katie Wood's prediction on a market correction? Oops, I just, I just lost that completely. It's just refreshing me. Yes, market correction, yeah. A good question, a very good question. I actually sit and think about it. Yes, I think there'll be a market correction. I think it's not going to be a 10%. I think there'll be, if we see a drop, I think we're talking about a, a good 20% drop, yeah. So let's say uh, it's the S&P 500, they're about 4,000, yes, close to 4,000. So 20%, we're talking about, it might drop to 3,600 again to where we were in around about October. So all that four or five months gain could drop. I think that could happen because uh, things are oversteaming up. We're still low interest rates. There's still money on the sidelines. I still think there's going to be a crash. Either one really deep one, there's going to spook a lot of new investors away. Okay? I'm not trying to scare you guys. I think there'll be a, a flash crash so hard that a lot of people will leave, take their losses, leave, and not come back. Okay? This happened in, two, this happened in 2003 uh, on the recovery up and down. This happened in 2000, a quick flash crash 2012. A lot of people never came back. I'm a spook. I've interviewed those people. They never came back. I think it will happen as well. It's going to spook, you know, this, this financial investor will try to spook the market. They'll all do it one go, boom, drop 20%. But then the recovery will be quick as well. It'll be a V-shaped recovery. That's what I think. It'll be a V-shaped recovery. It'll be the VIX. Like, remember, if I spoke about VIX, the VIX will go as high as 25, 26, 27, 7, about 37. 
swoop people and then slowly, slowly, it'll come back up, slowly recover back to hopefully back to the to the low 18s and 16 again. But you go back to the 18 and 16. When when VIX hit 18 and 16, everything is just going on a fly up again. So I think there'll be a crash, at least one or two crash. That's what I think. That's what I'm telling you. We cannot predict the crash here. No, but I, 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 I'm unable to predict the crash. But as long as we always keep some cash at the sideline and buy good quality stocks and always have a game plan, if the stock does crash, who would you buy? Don't panic and buy anything or don't panic and sell everything. That's all I can say. Cash at the side. So they will build a flash crash, at least two. One, a deep one, and one, around about a 10% one. Like the one happened during the you know the the president the post president election that went for a short period about two three weeks and then it comes back up again. Okay, I am looking. Look, Butler. Look how you doing. I know. Look, you come to. Uh, I've you know you always been there commenting for the last year. So I remember plug power at seven and analysts say, don't buy. It is not profitable. Uh, yeah. Uh, the analyst was right back then because based on the data on the Q1 and Q2 earning, yeah, I can see where the analysts are coming from. You know, I, I hate those analysts, but sometimes I see where they're coming from when you do your own anal analysis. So Q2019, Plot Power, Q3 and Q4, they were doing well. And when Q1 came before the COVID, their profit dropped so badly that they lost growth. Okay. And then COVID came and it dropped even further. But it's only Q3, they start jumping, and in Q4, they jumped up again, and then Biden's coming in, everything just reversed. So at that time, I think during that period, the analyst was right to say that they were not profitable. But now after that, they, they, they turn it around like new. Okay, remember when new was three bucks? When new was three bucks, I repeat, new was three bucks, and I told everybody not to buy it. <laughs> I put my hand out, a lot of people asked me, I said, I'll never buy new at three bucks. And guess what? I bought new at 45, I bought new at 60. So based on data sometimes you can only see the data in two quarters but when data improves don't be too stubborn sometimes you have to bite the bullet and just buy um still a dj mcintosh you're asking is it is there still a lot of upside for upwork i still believe in the freelance economy i sound really biased now when i see the multiples there are only 10 multiples compared to fiverr who was about 30 40 and upwork Upwork will hit 80 or 100, but they need to have squeaky clean earnings. They need to have good earnings for the next Q4, which is coming up in, in February. And as long as they're the earnings for Q4 and then coming up Q1 and Q2 showing growth at the steady rate, they should be on their way to the $100 per share. So again, based on data, they need to hit the target, okay? They cannot miss the target while Fiverr hits the target. That will be diabolic for Fiverr, uh, for Upwork. So if Fiverr hits and Upwork doesn't hit, that means the business model, that means the CEO or CFO or the cost control expenses is completely wrong. So we have to monitor. So for me, I bought Upwork to a point where I'm comfortable. I need to wait for the next data before I go in again, buying it at the highs of 50s and 60s. So sometimes we have to stagger our buying momentum. We cannot just go all in. We need to make a calculated risk decision. That's that's me. We, I'm waiting for the next queue for earning. Okay, I see another question. It just came up. Uh, Simon J. I said, CCIV Lucid. Uh, you're talking about Lucid stocks. Yeah, I've, I've not done my homework on Lucid stocks, so that's something I need to do. CCIV, I've seen a lot of comments about CCIV, so I'm going to write it down here. I've not, honestly, I've not done my homework. I've came across it last night on my phone, but I've never really read about it. Let me do a bit of a check on it. Lucid and CCIV. And... Uh, MA, hi Alex, what's your thought on growth potential of AMD? Um, AMD is a better situation than NVIDIA. So in AMD is buying out uh, ceilings and I think it might go through. Sitting at 90 bucks per share now, worth about $100 billion. I think it's still a lot of uh, potential upside, but you have to remember that AMD has potentially peaked just now. They've come to a peaking point. They, they, are, they are shown the new chips at CES. They're shown the new next generation chips, but it's still the same thing. Uh, they're still growing in data, data analyst center. So I think at this 190 to 100 bucks per share, waiting until the merger comes through, they need a bit of time. They need, I think they need at least two or three quarters before they demonstrate that they're better for future growth. So I think they might hover about between 80, 90 to 100, all the way to like summertime before it sprouts. Because remember, we're paying for the future value. What you're paying for just now, 
I would say it's an, a good earnings for the next two quarter. So if you buy now, don't expect to grow in the next few weeks or months. If you buy now, expect to grow at the end of the year, Q4. That's what I can, uh, uh, my views or, and on AMD. Okay, uh, what's a good price buying for Palantir? I'm thinking of less than 21. I mean, if you can get Palantir at 21, great. Uh, I think for me, if I were to buy, I've sold Palantir, by the way, on profit uh, yesterday. I never mentioned to anybody. I, I did it quite quickly. I don't know why I did it. But I sold Palantir because Palantir got a, a negative analyst and I felt that I needed more cash to buy hydrogen stocks. So I sold Palantir on a profit about 28 so the next time that I buy into Palantir would be if they drop below the 25 to 23 uh, buy trigger. If they don't drop to that point, if they start flying past 30, then I've missed my bet with Palantir. But I like the Palantir. They're still winning contracts. They're not winning big, huge, uh, you know, big contracts, but they're winning contracts in stages. So Palantir is high price just now. They are way over the multiples. They are way over the multiples in the next, at least in the next year. So if you can buy, buy the right price. I think 21 is a good price buying, but less likely you hit there, but you know, be flexible 23, 25. That's what I would say. And also the lockup period, I think MA is right. Do you think Palantir will drop? And it's because of the lockup period as well. So you see that drop. But then again, think of a lockup period. Look at Lemonade. The lockup period came in uh, first of, first of uh, 28, 27 of January and nothing really happened. It dropped 7% and they went up 9% the next day. So lockup period, I'm not too sure. Sometimes that actually works. People just buy and buy and buy. Excuse me. But I think they, they will drop. They will drop. <coughs> That's mine. That will be my call. Um, do you think gold and silver? Somebody's asking is gold and silver. Caleb Jiller, do you think gold and silver are in line for a good year? Okay, the thing about gold, silver. The thing about gold and silver, yeah, because gold has been up for so so high in 2020. The likes of Gretlin Gold and all these gold mining companies have so much cash, they're just mining. The problem with gold, when they go up, when the price is right, people start mining more and more. People start buying equipment, machinery, and start flooding the market with more gold and pushes the money down. And that's why people felt that gold is not a safe haven no more. I've spoken to Forex and uh, commodity traders. They said gold is not a haven no more. That is why Bitcoin is a preferable choice just now so you know gold's about a thousand eight thousand nine and you know grappling gold and all this gold they're mining at a big rate okay and the machineries are coming in so if they do hit gold or gold from 1008 to 2001 2002 in in the next short term if they have to, uh, a flash crash but i'm not sure where it's going to go up to the highs of 3000 so but it's more likelihood of bitcoin going from uh, 29 to 50 more than gold going from 1800 to, to 2000 so uh, that's my thought but if, if you're a type of person that wants gold in your portfolio you know you know uh, I think at the last good point it was buying it's not 1750 before the turnaround I think that's where the last time I looked at gold yeah what do you think of Adobe Mona Mona same as Salesforce I think Adobe is a great stock uh, the problem with Adobe they're making money. Uh, love the CEO. Love his cost control cutting. His strict costing. Um, great company. Uh, they're not paying dividend. They're still going for growth. I hope they buy buy other companies like what uh, CRM is doing. They're still growing, but um, only thing is the growth is dropping below about seven to nine percent growth just now. So I want you, if you want to buy more Adobe, think about what their forecast would be for twenty twenty one. I think the last year's forecast was between seven to nine percent. If the forecast is coming out lower than 7 to 8%, then be a bit wary. But if they come in and say we're going to hit 11%, Adobe will shoot up to the 500s, 550. So that's where I think about Adobe. Uh, so this thing keeps flipping well. Somebody asked, Pasang Serpa, Alex, talk about Frog. Uh, cloud company Frog. Again, I think Frog, I need to see more data. I looked at Frog, uh, I look at Snow, you know, Snow's got this momentum. Frog and Snow, I, I like Snow because of the, the price action, because of the drop. Frog, I need to give it time until post lockup period when I see the, the Q3, Q4, and then Q1, Q2 data before it convinced me that this is a sustainable business. Because we, you know, now we're just seeing real data. I want to see what they've used with the IPO money to grow. I want to see how they grew the team, 
uh, how they've grown the department, the, how they've grown the infrastructure, especially for cloud computing company. So give it time, you know, there's no rush then. Give it time to see how they've grown there before, more data before I can see whether it's investable. That's that's my, my, my view on Frog, okay? Can Lemonade reach a 300 billion market cap? RS Place, how are you doing RS Place? It depends on what year you're talking about. Is it going to be 2025 or 2030? But uh, Lemonade is picking up momentum. Uh, Lemonade, you shouldn't look them at the market cap. You shouldn't look at Lemonade at the sales revenue. You shouldn't look at re uh, Lemonade. There's two things that you look at uh, Lemonade, okay? It's the number of customer base, just like Netflix in 2012, 13, 14, 15. And also, uh, the other thing about Lemonade is you have to look at them based on the regions that ex where they expand to. So if they start expanding to the likes of Australia, if Australian uh, authorities are allowing Lemonade to, to sell insurances there, they're growing, they're going to grab a couple more million uh, subscribers. UK, uh, I think, are they in Italy? No. Holland, Scandinavian countries, are they going to South Africa? Are they going to the likes of uh, Canada, Mexico, South America? Asia, I don't think they'll be able to go in because there's all this you know, insurance is slightly different across in the Far East. But Lemonade, uh, you know, I'm not surprised if Lemonade goes 10x in the next 10 years. But 10 years, you know, so they still have the room for growth and competition. So something that we have to, to look closely. And uh, I, I've already bought in Lemonade anyway. I bought in about 119 and hopefully start growing it and start moving on with the story. I do like Lemonade. Uh, Kevin Chu, you're asking about FinTech Holdings, T-I-G-R-F-U-T-U. Uh, nope, I've I've not I've not even come across this the first time I've seen this. I'll write it down. Obviously, you've got a good reason why you're asking this, but I'll look I'll look it up and see um, if it's worth you know speaking on the show for future. So I'll look it up. Um, Taril Dylan, Alex, love your analysis. Thank you, thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Grudge, how are you doing? Alex, please tell me your recommendation on premium oil. Any updates? Yes, a few folks have asked me about premium oil. Okay. Uh, premium oil, you know, a spec story, but it's not as spectacular as the American spec stock where they sell the story so well and they just go double X, three X. So premium oil, you know, the company is literally, yeah, not far from where I live. <laughs> not far from that, literally that direction, about uh, five miles away. So I, I cycle past it every time. So premium oil, spec stock with a company called, um, what's that company's name? I can't remember now. Uh, God, it's left my head. So premium oil spec stuff. So premium oil is sitting about like 23 pence, 21 pence, 22 pence. And the oil, all the oil companies are still stagnant. I think they're all waiting for that 50, 55, 50, 60. They're waiting for the stability. All the oil companies are still cutting bodies. They're still removing, they're still cutting costs. And they're still not confident about maxing the production. So as it stands, because of COVID uh, phase two, phase three, and 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 OPEC not coming out to, to state whether they're cutting or they're increasing. So the oil are staying a bit flat just now. So to hoping to see that 2X, 3X, you know, the 50, 60, 70 pence that I was speaking about, I think we still have to wait on premium oil. Uh, we, and also we need to wait for more news on how the merger is taking place. I think that's what's not clear as well. I've got a, a, phone, a text from my mate on Messenger. He says, uh, what he told me on my text is Alex, all the guys who's working in premium oil says, uh, Chryso, sorry, working in Chryso says, hold premium oil stock until March, until the merger success and see what happens after that. So that's what I've got. That's why I'm still holding until March before I want to share any real beefy information. So I still hold a bit of premium oil, not much. I did shave half and bought other stocks, but I'm still keeping premium oil around about, I think I bought with 20, 21, 22. I'm still holding at that point. I'm still waiting. That's the only uh, oil stock that I've held in my portfolio. I'm hoping for that um, 50p and 75p climb. So that's my thought. Premium oil, but there's no real news. If I do find anything, you guys will be the first. You will definitely be on my show. I'll be explaining what premium oil is. Yeah. Okay. Um, thoughts on Virgin Galactic, please. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I told. I think I told uh, folks on Patreon. So what's happened yesterday, last night is, uh, there was a viewer called Fearless. As soon as I launched my video, Fearless uh, set a comment in a comment on my, my post, on my hydrogen stock post, you know, the top post. He says, Alex, do you know that uh, ARK Invest are creating a new space stock? And I said, space stock? So I went in 
space out. And the first space out I could think of two companies, Lockheed Martin, who supplies, you know, supplies to all the space out, and Virgin Galactic. And boom, they was right. Virgin Galactic was on the rumor mill to be in. And it was already up 12%. I jumped in at 12% and then I jumped, I bought it at about 11, 11, 11 p.m. at night. And then today, I think I've got about 5, 6% gain. I bought about 100 shares of uh, Virgin Galactic just for the hype. So, you know, if, if it persists, the hype goes on, you know, it, it's going to be a FOMO effect, to be honest. Yeah, for me, space, you know, uh, I've, I've said it in the past, space stock will be good for you guys. If you're between the age of 19 to 30, buy space stock because so much upside, so much upside. They, you know, they're going to hit 15 billion, 50 billion, 100 billion, but you need to give them time. At the moment, for a 39 year old person like me, buying a company that's not making money, that's not making revenue, they're just burning money through the roof, it's just not good enough for me. But if you're young, 1930 space stock is it's a good buy for me. I bought it now, it's just for, for that the gradual climb out and just hit and run swing trade. I'll call it swing trade. So, but the thing of Virgin Galactic on, on, on ARK investment is. I think there's a real company called Virgin Orbit. That's a real space travel. Virgin Galactic is just basically going from point A and then come back down. It's not really space travel. So it's Virgin Orbit that's that should be the real one when it comes into effect. So let's see the next couple of days how ARK Invest uh, rumors come about Virgin Galactic. Yep. Uh, thoughts on Nano Dimension? Yeah, Nano Dimension is my uh, top five growth stock for 2021. And I've got a position in it. And uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, it's I think about nine bucks just now. Israeli company, uh, I see good upside, but you know, you give it time. They need to start expanding. They need to start selling their 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 their, their printers before they get going. So I'm still holding it. Yep. Uh, Jamie Devin, uh, Neo still a buy at sixty. Yeah, I think I released a video saying that I think Neo will um, hit a hundred bucks at one at some point this year. If you know, great Chinese backing. There's not enough EV vehicles. I know we have seen the likes of GM coming out stating they're making EV cars and momentum is picking up for an established company. I think uh, Neo is still a buy. And I think if you want to buy Neo and hold Neo, you young guys out there, you know, between the 19 and 30, 35, buy Neo, hold Neo, I think it, was, it, it, will, it will surpass. The only worry, it's a $100 billion company just now. It's similar size to, you know, to, similar size to like Ford, BMW and all. So it's quite worrying that uh, they only produce 12,000 cars a year compared to to the likes of Volkswagen who produces like a massive scale. So that's the only overvaluation that you're paying for. But uh, once Neo established the infrastructure in China, charging points, their, their battery swapping out, it's a lot of money that they needs to be pumped in to build all these infrastructures. Yeah, they're gonna be spending lots of money. So don't expect to see profit. But once the infrastructure is in place in the tier one states in China, tier one meaning Shanghai, Shenzhen, Beijing, and then they start going to tier two, uh, tier two, uh, tier two cities, Tier three, tier four, and that's that's them established. Like how Alibaba and Tencent built their warehouses back in 2014, 15, 16. So uh Neo is a buy, but it's a bit higher risk. But if you start buying on the dip slowly, then you'll be on a good place for Neo. Uh uh what is that? So I'm I think it's catching hi Alex, uh from Alexander. Alexander Grit say, hi Alex, do you still own the likes of Pins and Etsy, uh, etc. Thanks. Pins, yes, I own Pins. I, hold, I own a thousand Pins shares. Yes, I do still own a thousand Pins shares. I wish I bought more. <laughs> I bought I bought a 1,000 pin share as soon as I, bought, I, I did the video back in 2019, you know, that millionaire stock. So I've got a thousand pin shares and I still hold it. You know, I'm trying to make my NVIDIA, my Fiverr, and my Tesla, my highest position, yeah? But it's still pins is sitting there, sticking out like a pen. And uh, I'm not selling it. I don't know why I don't want to sell it because I hope it turns into something. I still got a thousand pages. For Etsy, uh, I bought Etsy at 115, 120, and I think it went up to 160 before the cup and handle. There was a point where Etsy went up like that, and then the cup handle and went up again. I, I sold at some point 160. I don't hold Etsy no more. Um, because I was cutting on my hyper growth stock, I couldn't own too many back in uh, around November when I released my top three growth stocks. So I own Pins, I don't own Etsy, but Etsy, I still think it's a good company. Amazon is a stagnant, eBay is no good. So Etsy, Pintoto, uh, are, are, are great, are great companies to own for e-commerce and the likes of PayPal and, uh, and Square. Okay. Um, 
Callum Giller, he's asking, look, I envy him if we only had a time machine. Yeah, who is he talking about? I'm sure he's talking about somebody else. Yeah, I wish I got a time machine as well. I'll write myself a letter saying, don't bother if I had a time machine. You have to write myself back to myself in March. Yeah, And I'm just going to write to myself, say, Alex, do not bother trying to stock pick. Just buy ARK Invest. They're, they're going to do over 160% anyway. <laughs> ARK Invest is an amazing. ARK, ARK K. I think there's a lot of people always asking me, where can I buy ARK K in the UK? There's one place you can buy ARK K in the UK. It's a company, a broker called Stake. Okay, S-T-A-K-E. But stake, you need $30,000 pounds, $30,000 before you could invest in any of the ETF. So I can't afford $30,000 on a single ETF, so I can't. And the other place to go, RK, I believe, which I found yesterday, or somebody has mentioned it, is on spread betting on IG.com. Not Instagram, a, a broker called IG in the UK. There's only two places they can go, RK. Uh, you know, eToro, they don't do it. Hargiv Langston, they don't do it. In fact, if you type RK in Hargiv Langston, it comes up, but you're not allowed to buy it. That's a problem. Um, uh, Alice, what's your thought on blockchain companies? So Alice from HYL, <coughs> what's your thought on blockchain companies? Okay, let me tell you my experience on blockchain companies. I bought Riot, Riot shares back in 2017, 18, when Bitcoin was down. I lost 50%. And I moved my money out somewhere. So <clears throat> if I were to invest in blockchain, if I were to invest, I'd rather buy Bitcoin or Ethereum rather than blockchain companies. I know loads of them, they've got like seven guys working in a company just doing the mining away. You know, I don't know what dodgy stuff goes on. I, I prefer, I know they've got, I know some of them have got like 10x, but I, I prefer to sit my money closely with Bitcoin. I know they're volatile, but at least it's, you know, it's controlled by everybody, not by pump and dump. So that's my that's my quick take on blockchain companies. I'd rather buy Bitcoin itself. Yeah. Um, okay, Tiago Ferreira, how are you doing? What do you think about AMD, Apple, and Tesla and Hyundai partnership? It's great. AMD and Apple, Apple and Hyundai, because I own AMD, I own Apple, I own Tesla, I don't own Hyundai, uh, because I own Tesla. And I think it's it's good. I think it's good that when companies get into competition, they start merging and start handshaking with another company to make things happen. I think Apple of Hyundai, I'm not sure what the chance of success is. You see, when Apple came out and they said they spoke about Apple cars, yeah. We want to develop Apple car. You think that they will have a fully fledged car, but it looks like now Apple just wants to show, wants to sell like an infotainment, like an Apple TV in the car and self-driving. So success for Apple and Hyundai with lack of data, I don't know how that's going to pan out, but it's going to be 2024, 2025. It's still quite far away. And Tesla will be rocking away with the likes of the, uh, the ARM processing chip, the self-driving vehicle. So Tesla will win that race from where we see now, as long as uh, Mr. Mr. Elon Musk stay as healthy as he can and live a long, good life like Warren Buffett, we all be fine. And uh, AMD, like I said, I mentioned before, great stock. I like the company, but at the moment, I think they're, they're a bit up on where they are. They peak, so we need to wait at least two to three earnings before we see more real momentum for growth. Is Apple a really long-term? Yeah, Apple, like, you know, I, it's not from me, but it's from uh, from other analysts. Uh, they always say that Apple don't sell it, don't trade it, but own Apple. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I've got huge Apple holdings. Uh, not as big as my other, but I hold Apple in the background. I call Apple as my uh, dividend stocks. I don't call Apple growth now dividend stocks, and they're quite stable, strong, defensive dividend stocks. What do you think about Switch? Uh, um... Okay, uh, Rayson Taran, right? Sorry, I'm pronouncing your name wrongly because I, right, so you, I think you're saying some people copy Arc Pi on Trading 212. Would you copy the pie? Okay, this is my problem here, okay? I'm being really biased now. ARK Invest, when you look at their, their portfolio, the pie, okay? The portfolio ARK Invest, Katie Woods ARK Invest, ARK Invest K, or people are trying to recreate it on Trading212. The thing is about ARK Invest, it's not, they don't just buy shares and leave them there, like the likes of Lensdale Train or Hargive Langston's um, fund managers, the active fund managers. So they own a portion of the shares and they do option tradings, on the remainder 10 20 percent of the cash holdings they do option tradings yeah high volume option trading that's where they gain the gains of 110 120 160 percent for these stocks 
Okay, they don't just buy and leave them there and they grow 160%. That's not the case. They're actually active volume trading. So if you were to copy somebody on trading 212, how are they going to mimic the option trading growth? That's actually the one that boosts the additional 40, 50% growth at the back end. They can't. You can't. There's no way that you can mimic ARK Invest growth on trading 212 Pi. I tried to say it, but I don't want to release a video about it and, and annoy every other YouTubers or people who actually invest in them because, you know, it's better than investing in oil stocks and invest in the, the copy trading pie. So that's that's my qualms. That's my personal qualms. If you want to buy ARK Invest stocks, just buy on eToro or go interactive broker and just get it. But it's, it's not as easy as going on trading 212. Okay. Uh, Adrian Victor, how? I've seen you comment. How are you, Adrian? Hello, Alex. Can you tell us about your top three stocks on Interactive Broker? Do you try to buy stocks with Margin or Etoro or IB Care? Okay, I'm going to log on and remind myself what are my top three, okay? They change every time. So, you Interactive Broker, because I've not released about, basically, in my Interactive Broker, if you guys know, it's my FU portfolio, yeah? FU family unit portfolio. So, what are my top three? I don't use Margin. I wish I did, but I don't. I think my rule of thumb is if I use margin, I get greedy, I lose money. And it's my family money. So I do not want to take the risk. But let me let me log on. Let me turn on my Wi-Fi. I know my first one on Interactive Broker is pins. Like I said, I own a thousand pin stocks on Interactive Broker. Okay, so the first one is definitely pins, a thousand pins stock. And the second highest stock that I own is Fiverr. Okay, I own about 76 Fiverr stocks up there. And the third highest I own is Tesla, okay? In there, it's only 10 Tesla. Uh, no, it's not Tesla, sorry. There's somebody has overtook Tesla. It's actually Upwork. <laughs> so, Pence, Fiverr, Upwork. That's my top three on my FU portfolio just now. And hopefully, I'll release an uh, uh, update pretty soon. I was meant to release them, but I failed, obviously. So, hopefully, I can release that soon. So, that's me. On, and I don't use margin at all. Uh, I'm just going back down to... Uh, Okay, so uh, Tino Cardano, how are you doing, Tino? Will Tesla dip next week? Looking for a good entry point. Okay, so Tesla, in the next few weeks here, yeah, they'll be releasing a lot of data. They'll be releasing data about their factories. They'll be releasing data about the self-driving vehicles. They'll be releasing data about their, their, their future forecast for 2021. Okay, it's not just Tesla, yeah? It's the likes of Lemonade, the likes of Apple, the likes of Microsoft. They'll all be releasing the data for 2021 whether they're going to be on like 11%, 12%, 25%, 100% growth, crops, right? So if if any dip were to come, it might be after the data. They might be dis Some analysts might be disappointed saying they were hoping for 750,000 cars next year for Tesla, but they came out 700,000 and people go, oh, we don't like it, they're going to dump their shares. So if you want, wait for one of these news and hoping that it's a bad news that comes out and buy on the opportunity drip, dip. And then hopefully this bad news doesn't come through. Elon Musk comes and turn the show around again and move back up. Or it might go oppositely, it might go back up. So for me, if I were to go into Tesla again, I'm waiting for this news to come in and hopefully put it down a bit and prepare your cash. That's that's me for Tesla. And I think my entry point, the last I spoke, uh, I believe was about, first trigger was about 810, 820, and second trigger was about 780, 790. So that's where I'm still sticking on on my pedal, my first, second, and third buy trigger for Tesla. Okay, Callum Giller, I think that Biden's new stimulus check uh, next month could see another rise in popular choice like Tesla and Bitcoin. I think Biden's stimulus check might drive not the likes of Tesla and Bitcoin. I think they would drive more of the, the bank stocks, the uh, not the green, the green energy stocks has gone up. They might drive like Wayfair. If you guys realize Wayfair, yeah, Check Wayfair, it's W the ticker. Wayfair has gone from 230 to 260 to 270. I think they're sitting about 310 just now. And Wayfair has gone up. If you look at Wayfair's chart, it's literally doing a W, yeah? They've gone up, they've come back down, they've come up, they've come back down, they're doing a proper word, so they're going to look at W. So Wayfair is really a measurement of uh, people buying homes, people decorating their homes because they're on a lockdown. So stimulus check, look at Wayfair, use Wayfair as a judge judgmental. And all this e-commerce stock like Etsy, Wayfair will move up the way. So I think more of the e-commerce Home Depot stocks they will go up with the stimulus check because hydrogen has been priced in already. And the likes of EV and Tesla, all the Blink, they've all been priced in already. I think the next will be all that um, that house building stocks. Yeah. Um, Indy0227, how are you doing, Indy? Alex, thanks 
also to you. I'm able to stick to my investing strategy. Great for the great mentioning, uh, mentoring content. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, any Okay, Alice, any thoughts shall we ask Etor to make available to us on ARK? In fact, yeah, I know guys still talking about ARK. I am actually meeting my ARK. Uh, no, sorry. I'm actually meeting my eToro manager called Daila. So I'm on the, 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 the goal account. So I've got one-on-one -on -one manager. So next week, I'm meeting her on Wednesday. And one of my key questions is to ask, can I request for RK? That's very popular. Everybody wants it. I want to invest in RK. So I will make uh, that comment to her. If I get any news, I'll definitely share it on Closing Bell with everyone on RK. Okay? So there's still, there's still, um, uh, there's still hope. Oh, RX, you mean? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll ask them because ARK is a very popular. Very popular. Okay, uh, Alexander Brown, what do you reckon good price buying IAG is 155 a good price? I don't even know what IAG price is just now. So let me quickly check. Um, IAG stock. To be honest, I prefer EasyJet stock. So the last time I saw IAG, there was about 100... Uh, Uh, so they have gone. I think we for the for this airline stock for EasyJet and IAG, hundred sixty. They actually priced in for uh, uh, an opening up. They actually hundred sixty. They priced in for the country opening. They actually priced in for March. Hopefully the airline starts opening up again. So if this COVID nineteen starts dragging on, they might fall. They might slowly. They, you can see this going on a straight line. They might slowly try to dip a bit. So if you're buying now, you're buying for a guaranteed open up post Easter. So if it doesn't happen, it's going to roll off. So if I were you, I would wait. Okay, I'd rather wait for good price entry than miss it going up. That's my that's my thought on IAG. Okay, I'm um, just looking. I use, so um, Rider64, what do you think of UMC, a semiconductor player? I don't know much about UMC, but I'm writing it down to make sure I go have a look at it. Okay, Rider. Okay, uh, Simon J, are you trading 212 in USD? Does anyone else know whether there are people who say there's no point, but if I do sell in whole cash, it doesn't convert on rates all the time. I just stays in dollars. Uh, is that? Every time if you sell anything on, if you're based in the UK, if you sell anything US dollar, it comes back in pounds. And when you buy in again, it goes back in US dollar. So sometimes it's that trading of the currency that make your gain better or loss. So I don't think it stays in uh, USD. It actually converts back to the pounds. That's what I think. Uh, uh, I'm just reading. Uh, Tiago Ferreira, what do you think of Qualcomm, Alex? Thank you very much for everything. Thank you very much. No problem, Tiago. Uh, Qualcomm. Uh, in terms of Qualcomm, you know, I like Skyworks. I like Qualcomm as well. But I think because of Apple making their own chips, it's really hindering Qualcomm's business. That's why they dip a bit. But they're going up because of 5G anyway. And uh, Broadcom, I like Broadcom. If I had a choice between Broadcom and Qualcomm, I'll choose Broadcom because they still pay dividend and uh, they're cash rich as well. But again, 5G play, they're great. But I think they're already quite priced in for the 5G just now. So I don't know whether it's still worth going in. But you see the likes of Micron, they're still all, all, all are going up. So yeah, for 5G play, Qualcomm, Broadcom and Skyworks, it's, it's still it's still a good play. But I think we're quite at the plateau until, again, the earnings, okay? We need to watch the earnings for Apple, how much, how many Apple stocks, uh, Apple phones have been sold in the Q4. And if they sold loads of Apple stocks, that means the, the, the 5G, uh, you know, it's, it's still going to grow. It's going to be depending on the Apple phones out there. Okay. Um, yeah, I think David Penny, I've just mentioned premium oil. So we've got no news yet, but when I see more news, I'll speak more about premium oil. Hopefully in like February, March period, I just want to see the merger complete. I think that's, uh, that's where I'm coming from for premium oil. Uh, oh, uh, Marlon Manuel, is it a good idea to sell some stagnant? Okay, let me repeat. Is it a good idea to sell some stagnant Amazon, Google stocks to get some momentum stocks? A very good question. I think about it every day. Okay, I hold Amazon stocks. I hold quite a few Amazon stocks and it's sitting there doing nothing since my last video about Amazon stocks, about 3,000 when I bought 2009, 2000, and sitting there like a duck. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking about it every day, uh, whether we should um, not risk transfer because I'm not making loss. I'm not break, sort of breaking even anyway. So if your cash, my, my, my point would be, if your cash, if you're low in cash, okay, if you're low in cash, you've got no cash and you see stocks going up and you hold Amazon stocks, 
So you can use Amazon to substitute as your cash holdings, okay? Rather than your cash go inflated. So use if you think that other stocks are going, you can sell half of Amazon. You can sell one Amazon. If you sell one Amazon stock, it's three grand. You could buy another spec stock. So do that. Use your Amazon, redemp it as cash, and buy something else. That's what I would do. That's what I'm thinking. If 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 one of my eyes, my huggy blanks on, you know, I'm out of cash. It's only Amazon stock that if I need to buy any really interesting stock, I will redeem one Amazon and buy a couple hundred other stocks. That's what I'll do. Use it as uh, cash. In terms of Google, I think Google's earning will be good because they're, they're on the recovery. So what I'll do, if you want, you wait for the earnings before you make a decision on the, the stagnant Amazon, Adobe, Google, uh, Microsoft. Just wait for the earnings to see what they are in the future before you redeem them. That's what I'll say. Yeah. Uh... Head, head, tail, tail, uh, yeah, big blue boy. I hit 300 yard drive on Tilray, Tilray today, up 23.57. I hold a thousand shares. Well done at eight bucks. Well done. All this um, marijuana stock is going up with Biden coming. Marijuana stocks is doing well. And also the gambling stocks like DraftKings, you know, are doing well as well. So I think this this one might be might be the, the underdogs to do to, to to hyper potential group this year, yeah. So, but then again, they'll be volatile, they'll be swinging up and down. But all the way working up to Biden coming in and, and his induction to the White House, I think, uh, mar marijuana stocks and what he's going to announce on that day and how his policies are will influence how Tilray go even higher or back down to normality. So, be careful, take some profit off the table if you could, if you could as well. That's what I would say. And the bio momentum, if you go, again, okay. Um, uh, Nick London, hello, big fan on the channel. Thoughts on EV and eSports ETF. How about SMT, Scottish Mortgage Trust? All for long-term growth. Uh, I like SMT. Uh, I used to invest in SMT until I purely go on Tesla. So what I would say to people is, uh, I know a lot of people stopped picking uh, last year, yeah? And I've asked them, say, uh, how well have you done for your stock picking? They're coming, oh, it's a great year. So how much is a great year? 20%, 30%, 40%. But then you work so hard trying to stock pick for 20, 30, 40, 40% growth and you go SMT, Scottish Mortgage Trust. And these guys have gone like 80, 90, 100%. Like Scottish Mortgage Trust, Bailey Guilford American and Bailey Guilford Positive Funds. This tree has done really well for you UK investors. So if you have been stock picking last year and you just made under 50% gain, maybe you need to think, maybe you should put a bit more money in SMT. Bailey Gilford Positive and Bailey Gilford American or I think there's another Bailey Gilford uh, Far East one and sometimes you know just put up a 20% let sometimes let the, the fund managers do what they do and in terms, it seems that it works active fund managers yeah? not those flatline ones like uh, Hargreaves Langston or, or Train or, or BlackRock you know but Bailey Gilford is similar to ARC for us in, in Europe uh, I see one I like this question NDL, thoughts on Nintendo. I like Nintendo. Nintendo is my top three holdings on eToro. I recently moved up about 10, 12%. Uh, uh, I like Nintendo. I think you will do well. Uh, obviously, you will get hit if the Olympics doesn't go through with Japan because uh, it, it's a big day for Japan and Mario and the, the Tokyo Olympics. If they doesn't does happen in 2021, then I might get hit. But in terms of staying at home, People playing games. I think Nintendo will still do far better than the likes of Microsoft and Xbox because Xbox and Microsoft are only for a certain group of uh, sports game players, but Nintendo seems to be for every household. So I am long on Nintendo. Okay. Um... <laughs> I'm the reading Marlin reply. Uh... Simon J, I'm reading this. Uh, I think since 7 July, if you look at across the charts, Amazon actually lost 1-2%. In the red for six months long. Yeah, I think Amazon has gone really stagnant since um, since their last. There's, there's no real news, and the recent Amazon news about Berkshire Hathaway and Matt Diamond of Goldman Matt Diamond Matt Diamond is it Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley saying that they're going to merge together and create like a, a super pharmaceutical or, or insurance health company that broke apart. So Jeff Bezos, I don't know whether it's his, his private life that he's focusing on, but it's not in the in the spotlight recently to announce great, uh, great um, growth for the next growth story. So we just have to wait for the earnings and what Amazon predicts for the growth this year. 
So Amazon, you could take, you could redeem one Amazon stock as cash to buy this stuff. You know, you don't have to sell it Amazon quickly. I think Amazon is still in the play, but if you can find something that's bigger growing like that, if you think Etsy or someone can grow bigger, then fine, go for it or EV stock. Uh, I'm looking. Oh, Rick, hello, great stream. Thank you. Do you think Twitter will continue to crash or is it a good entry point? I like Twitter. I think Twitter is key to any business just now and Twitter is the place where I find lots of stock story. But the problem with Twitter is not the CEO. I know that everyone uh, speaks for the CEO uh, each and every time on privacy. But I think that the thing with Twitter is how are they going to make money? You see the likes of Telegram, yeah? That's come up. Telegram is different. I tried Telegram today. You can open a channel on Telegram. You, even Donald Trump came on Telegram and you can share videos up to, is it 250? mag or two gigs or it's got so much potential it's starting to be like wechat so if telegram starts going ipo and starts growing telegram might overtake twitter at some point so twitter will still grow but there's still no way to see how we're going to see proper revenue stream so that's my only worry about twitter i know that drop and they bounce back up but how far can they go the only way they'll go up is when facebook stocks come down and people find place for the social media area and snap and twitter will be on the rise so that's my my thoughts on, on Twitter. I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but that's my thought. I I, I see other areas having a bigger growth on that one. Uh, okay, uh, Alistair West. He's asking a very portfolio question, which I get asked every time. So it's, it's for Alistair and many other people across in the UK. Is there a simpler way to transfer whole portfolio to another platform, like for example Hargrave, Langston to two one two? So for you UK viewers. I get to ask this question every time. My quick answer is no. Okay? Hargive Langston, if you move your portfolio away, they will charge you for moving away. So Hargive Langston will charge. Let's say you own 10 Apples, 10 Tesla, 10 Amazon. They'll charge you three transactions for moving. And the other problem to going to trading 212 is trading 212 do not have the capacity to transfer shares. You know, they're not like the big five. They're busy with their, their, their CFDs. They don't have the capacity for the transfer. You take too long. You waste your time. You'll be on the phone forever. You get so frustrated. Four months later, nothing happens. So if you want to do transfer, you would do transfer to the likes of uh, Hargreaves Langston to Interactive Brokers or AJ Bell or, or the other big IG. But if you want to go to Trading212, you'd rather sell everything off and rebuy it on the same day. Hopefully, you don't make any losses because you're not going to incur fees. So that's my point. You could do that, the transfer really easily in a matter of like a week or two. But if you want to do shares transfer, it's going to be a very hard one. It's not like, a, you know, not like the landline transfer or your internet broadband transfer. It's not that easy. That's all I can say. Okay. Okay, I will I will spend another five, ten minutes uh, to go through thoughts. Uh, Kevin Chan, thoughts on NVIDIA trillion dollar cap in the future? Yes, definitely. NVIDIA is going to be a trillion dollar company. Now they've got an infotainment, which people undermine. I know we've got a data center, we've got a gaming, we've got a cryptocurrency, but the infotainment center and then buying ARM. Okay, ARM is different from NVIDIA. NVIDIA produces own chip, but ARM leases the license out for the likes of Tesla and they make the own chips. Like M1 for the Apple, your, your new Apple MacBook, it's an M1 chip. It's a, it's a patent of an ARM processing chip. If NVIDIA successfully buy them, ARM up, the route to the trillion dollar company will be a lot faster. I would say between five to seven years. You know, it's not like Tesla. If Tesla will be a lot quicker, Nvidia will go there quite uh, naturally. That's what it is. As long as they get uh, ARM, I would say then it's five to seven years. That, that's 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 my humble opinion. Okay, uh, Mac. Hey man, thoughts on Microsoft being a dead money, two hundred six average? Yes. Okay. I, I've always said I put my hand up. I always said that Microsoft is the the, the the best company before and after COVID. Okay, they are very very defensive, very proof pays you dividend. A great growth, great CEO. Now fought with Microsoft. In fact, if you put a Microsoft card against an Apple card, I think a Microsoft will be a 10 out of 10. And micro, uh, no, Microsoft to me is a 10 out of 10 stock. Apple is like 9.8. But why is Microsoft stagnant? It's just, it's grown too much. It's just being stagnant. So I myself, even though I call it a 10 out of 10 card, I sold Microsoft and bought Tesla. Yes, that's what I've done. Before the S&P 500 induction, I sold all my Microsoft and bought Tesla. I'm glad I've done it. I'm up about 40% on it just now. I've done it. So like uh, Amazon, if you are running out of cash, you go Microsoft stock, 
just redeem them, redeem it as cash and buy some other stocks. And you can always buy uh, Microsoft back again because you treat Microsoft not as a growth stock, but as a, as a, as a dividend stock. That's, that's all I want to say, okay? Uh, going... Uh, uh, yes, I think I've spoken about Microsoft stock as well, Taji. Hi, Luba. I know you're late. Uh, what I'm intending to do is you've missed the part about risk transfer. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this video. I'm going to cut and try to convert into a six, seven minute about the risk transfer portion with some examples and launch it out again. So for guys, you know, it's already one half hours. No one's going to watch an hour and a half uh, video, but I'm going to do the second summary of the risk transfer and turn the video and share with everyone uh, on, on YouTube again. So don't worry. Don't watch this one and a half video. If it's a rerun, I will relaunch another uh, a segment of it. Okay. Um, Sarah's Power Holdings. No, I, I, I've not. I'm going to write it down. I'm, I'm looking. You guys are giving me ideas for new stocks. Some, my list is growing, but it's not growing as fast as you guys. You guys list. Uh, yep. Marlon, you sold your Microsoft 220. Well done. Well done on that. So I sold. But make sure when like a risk transfer, even though you're making money, it doesn't mean that you're, it's a risk loss transfer. It could be a risk gain transfer. Like if you got Amazon, you got Microsoft, you know, it's stagnant. You can redeem it and find somewhere else where it go growth. For example, if you sold Microsoft and went to Apple because you found an Apple M1 chip is coming, you will be up about another 15, 20%. So it could be risk transfer on a profit stock as well. You could redeem cash and then move on somewhere else. Don't stay for so long because we're living in 2020, 2021. I can say this one last time here. Yeah? I've been investing for that nine years. This will be my 10 year. And I've never seen stocks grow 20, 30% in a day. In the last seven years investment, the last time I saw a stock got up 50%, do you know what stock that was? And I was there watching it. It was Weight Watches, yeah? There was Weight Watches going up 50% day one, 50% day two, because Oprah Winfrey was buying a portion of Weight Watches. That rumor got everybody excited and Weight Watches went up. And what is Weight Watches? Who buys Weight Watches stocks? I bought, I gained, I pumped in them. And 2020, 2021, you not, See, I uh, 2022, 23 going on. You're not going to see stocks flop going up and down 20 to 30 percent in a day. That's what I want to tell you. So, take this opportunity to swing. If you can't swing, just buy and hold, but also take the opportunity to sell stocks because once they go up so high, they do drop because they cannot sustain the, 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 the gains unless it's a really good quarter earnings. That's all I want to say. Okay, okay, I think uh, I've done one and a half hours. I think that's for me, it's gone. Uh, beyond my time scale, and I'm really humble. I'm really happy that all of you guys turn up and all these really good questions come out. That's why I say it each and every time that, you know, it's not just me. I think everybody's created a really harmonious uh, community here uh, on, on on my channel. And, you know, I've seen you guys comment on other channels, but, you know, thank you for coming along. And hopefully, hopefully um, I will do more live. So I'll, I'll put, I'll put a, a vote after this poll. Do you think I should do more live session once a month, once a week? I'll let you guys vote if this is helpful for you. And I think it's helpful. I think I really enjoy this. I can see what questions and the stocks that's coming in. So thank you very much. And I'll do a quick summary. And also the other news that I want to share is I'm thinking, I've been speaking a couple of my uh, my patrons. I think I'm thinking of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Okay, two things I'm going to announce quickly. But in future, I will tell more. It's about Discord, okay? Hopefully I'll share more information about Discord and also Telegram. I think Telegram is a great platform. Hopefully I can get more information out. So thank you very much to all of you. I really appreciate this. Uh, have a good night. Have a good weekend. Hopefully, I'll share another video with you tomorrow as well uh, before the weekend. But I really do appreciate you guys coming back. And I will do a short six to seven minute summary of risk transfer so you guys can recap what anybody has missed out with the good examples that I shared. So thank you very much, guys. And uh, have a good night. And uh, see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Let me try to type something. Thank you. Oh, can I type something? Thank you very much. Yep. I'm sorry if I'm not answered all, all, all the questions, but hopefully um, if you can, you know, you guys can feel free. I'll always put time aside to answer questions. Okay. See you guys. Thank you very much. And you get more water. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.